Hi, hey, my name is Eric Dorn, I'm an INFJ, and today I'm going to talk about the five worst things about being an INFJ. Okay, let's get serious here. First of all, INFJs, the philosophers, introverted, intuitive, feeling, judging types, they are one of the 16 personalities. Actually, they're 1% of the global population, and it sucks just as much as you can imagine. If you're an INFJ, I'm sorry. Childhoods are rough, and it's especially rough for you. Okay, let's get on with it. What are my five worst experiences growing up as an INFJ? First of all, it all started to go downhill when I started to read. Yeah, reading, it's such a temptation. Once you start, you can't stop. You just get absorbed with it. It's book after book after book and suddenly you believe in magic and fairies and dragons. Suddenly, all you think about is your favorite main character. What is going to happen to Harry Potter? And how is he going to defeat Voldemort? Reading is a fascinating experience and it's probably the best experience. Seriously, it's better than drugs. When you read, it's amazing. But when you talk about reading with other kids, it's not so amazing. Turns out most other kids don't like to read. And if they do read, it's very light. It's comic books, it's Spider-Man, and it's Donald Duck. Honestly, I can't relate. <laughs> well, the truth is, I think that's when alienation starts for an INFJ. Just realizing you have a fascination with magic and fantasy and fairy tales and stories and realizing that other people don't necessarily share that. And if they do, it's on a very simple and easygoing degree <laughs> and once you start you can't really stop you're like Plato you discovered that there is a world outside the caves there is a world outside soccer and uh, superheroes and <laughs> fun fact time did you know that about 20% of you guys are subscribed to my channel yeah that means four out of five of you are not subscribed but hopefully you're enjoying it if you are enjoying it, do consider to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything else. Also, it really helps support my channel. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the video. Now, I was a very optimistic kid and I just thought, okay, it will get better, you know? I was starting to get all these questions and I was starting to think, okay, I need answers. And I was like, I need to start school. So I begged mom if I could start school early, but it was not possible. You have to wait until you're six years old. And I waited and I started and it sucked. Yeah, that's the second worst thing about being an INFJ. The second worst thing about uh, being an INFJ kid, starting school. School, it's supposed to be cool. It's supposed to be learning. It's supposed to be figuring things out. It's supposed to be like uh, an amazing journey into uh, truth and the world and the universe you're supposed to finally understand why planets planets exist why we're all here what we're meant to do what the hell math is and how to use it and I came into school with lots of fascination I was so excited to start learning and I remember my first day I got my math book I sat down and I opened it and I was like digging through all the numbers and it was great I was having a blast I was figuring things out and it was so easy and so fun and I was just going through the whole book and I, at the end of the day I was done yeah I'd finished the book great perfect teacher could I have the next one please what no no you couldn't you couldn't have the next book you had to work with this book for the whole rest of the year yeah <laughs> turns out you have to read and learn at a steady degree and you're not supposed to read past your level so I sat there and stared at chapter one again because I was not allowed to go further than that and I stared at it and I found myself losing myself into another world and that's when the daydreaming started yeah daydreaming it's a drug it's like reading it's highly addictive 
And as an INFJ, you tend to have a very vivid imagination. Honestly, it becomes almost more real than real life. Eventually, I'm just gone. I'm no longer part of class. I'm no longer in the classroom at all. I'm just staring out the window. I'm just looking away, lost in thought, thinking about all kinds of things, mysteries, truth, science fiction, fantasy, elves, vampires, yeah, you name it. And it was great. Honestly, it was the best. And eventually I had to get this all out there and I had to draw. So I drew and I drew and I drew. I drew in the math books. I drew in the physics books. I drew in the history books. Everywhere I went, I had made all these weird figures and symbols and characters. I drew horses, unicorns. I drew manga characters, people with pointy hair, people with big glasses. I drew and I drew and I drew everything I got in my head, everything I imagined I just had to get out there. I had to get on paper. I drew and I write and I wrote and I wrote and I did all these things to express myself until the teachers noticed. So at the end of uh, maths, my year in maths, my teacher asked me to hand in my math book. And I was like, what? I have to hand this one in? Uh, and uh, she saw no equations, no numbers, no, no maths. All she saw were pretty little drawings. So naturally she asked me to do the entire thing one more time. She needed me to answer every single question and she needed proof that I had answered every single question. So what is the third worst thing about uh, being an INFJ? Actually, what's the fourth worst thing about being an INFJ kid? Well, I mentioned daydreaming, right? The problem with daydreaming is it's a gateway drug. Daydreaming leads to more heavy things. Eventually, it leads to philosophy. Eventually, it leads to questions like, why should I trust any authority? Why should I listen to teachers? Do adults really know anything? What is truth? What is even science? What is wisdom? Why are we here? What is the point of anything? Are we really supposed to go to school? Is this really supposed to be it? Eventually, you start asking questions and you can't stop. And those questions become a fascination. I had to figure out why we were here, how the universe worked, and what the meaning of life was. And I couldn't stop thinking about it. So, I began working on it. I began working on all these theories. I began puzzling it all out. Like Socrates, I believed that you could figure it all out just by thinking. You didn't need to go out into the world and do science. You didn't need to do field studies. You could just think and figure it out all by yourself. All the truth, all the answers to every single question in the universe, it's all in here. You just have to think long enough and you'll get there. And I got there. I got it. My first INFJ aha insight. Suddenly it all clicked into place. I figured it out. The truth of the world, the universe, why we're all here, what the point was. I figured out it was all about balance. Balance was the key to life, to happiness, to joy, to everything. If we could only find balance, harmony, everything would work out. There would be no war, no conflict, no climate change and everything would be amazing. Once I figured it out, I realized other people need to understand this as well. Politicians need to know this. Scientists need to understand this. Everyone, the media, everyone needs to hear this because it would change their lives. It would transform us all, just knowing that we just need to be more balanced. So I went to my mom and I asked her, I told her, I need to get this published. I have written this document. It explains everything about the world. It is the answer to everything. And I need to get this published. 
So she looked at me and she said, how about we go get an ice cream instead? So finally, the worst thing about being an INFJ growing up, my worst INFJ experience, astrology. Astrology was for me like fascinating. I mean, the thought that the stars could explain everything, the thought that the stars held the key to the universe. Stars could explain everything about human behavior, about our goals, about our relationship issues, about our problems in life. If we understood our stars, if we understood our horoscopes, we could predict everything about the world and about the future. We'd have it all laid out clear for us. And I wanted to have it all laid out clear for me. I wanted to know exactly who I was going to be when I grew up. I wanted to know exactly where I was going to end up. I wanted to know exactly what I need to do and where I need to go. I couldn't not know things. I needed to know things. And astrology promised me the answer. So I got down my birth time. I got down my birth date. And I put it all down. And I figured it out. I saw it. Oh my God, everything clicked into place. I knew exactly who I was. I was an Aquarius. I had the cancer as my ascendant. I had Scorpio as my moon. I had all these things, you know, it was amazing. It was incredible. It was the truth. And it explained everything to me. All existential anxiety wiped out, gone, perfect, great. Or so I thought. Of course, thinking this, I thought everybody has to know this. Once again, I thought, Everybody has to know this. Everybody has to figure this out. Everybody has to learn this. So me and my 12 year old self, we went out, we went out and knocked doors and we told people about the Lord and savior astrology. <laughs> and I told people, okay, if you give me one Euro, $1, basically, <laughs> I'm going to give you your horoscope. I'm going to draw up the entire map of your planets. And I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about your life and what's going to happen to you. And I did. I, it was a professional service. I was very entrepreneurial. You know, I was uh, very professional about it. And I put it all together and I knocked on all doors and I went everywhere and I drew up a lot of horoscopes. Until I realized they didn't work. Uh, one day my mom told me, actually... Your birth date wasn't 1427, it was 1327. And I stared at her like, what? That's one hour off. Mom, one hour makes a big difference. And I just went obsessively, I went into all the books and I drew it all up and I looked at all the stars and I was like, what? No, it's all different. Nothing I wrote was correct. Every single thing was wrong. I didn't know myself at all. I didn't know my future. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I was supposed to be. This wasn't, the, this wasn't science. This was all bullshit. I had only thought it was real because I wanted to think it was real. I had been blinded by the horror effect. The four effect, you know, that thing that makes you want to believe that things are real. The thing that wants to make you rationalize things into making sense. We want the world to make sense, right? So we do anything we can to think up of an explanation for how it would work. I wanted to believe I was that horoscope, that I was that star, that I was that the star sign. Only I wasn't. So yeah. Those were my five worst times growing up as a kid, as an INFJ. What about you? What was your worst time? Feel free to share your thoughts down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Oh my God, I just got this image in my head. Suddenly I see it. Did you know? Actually, if this video gets a thousand likes, I'm gonna make a new one about INFJ teenage years. So leave a like and subscribe. Thanks.